Hello everyone, uh, good afternoon and I want to thank the organizer for this opportunity. I am Samar Mohanty. Uh, I want to specially thank the organizer to put me at the last because that gives me the opportunity to say best is for the last. But unfortunately I can't. I am amazed by the speakers in uh, this whole session OIS has organized here. So I am going to talk about a gene agnostic optogenetic therapy. Already there is uh, in previous panels it has been discussed but how we have a new approach uh, to it and uh, that I'm going to describe a true platform approach. There's a multi-characteristic opsin which is not only shown to be a efficient in multiple uh, genotype agnostic manner but also in a disease agnostic manner. So we are the company who have shown both preclinically and some proof of concept which shows it's not only for RP but for other IRDs like Stargard, cone rod dystrophy mutations that we are able to improve vision. And in our phase one to exploratory study, we have very favorable safety profile with uh, uh, strong efficacy signal, which we are now doing, uh, validating through a multi-center randomized double mast and SAM control trial, which is well designed to be a, a registration trial. The, so just to tell you, in our phase one to a trial, the study was enrolled within few weeks. Uh, so that shows there is enough number of patients who really need this uh, tr treatment which is lacking in this space. And in our phase 2B trial, the randomized trial, also 90% of subjects were enrolled within first three months. So we are fully enrolled, no ocular SAE in our RCT and top line data is expected in Q1. And just to differentiate to tell, not only we are uh, doing this randomized trial in RP, but also we have dose patient, which the news will be out soon, in StarGuard patients, a phase two trial, and, and we are the first to actually inject patients, which are not profoundly vision loss, but also patients who have vision up to 20 by 640, with other eye being 20 by 200. So with that, I think we can have a compelling package with which we can go to FDA and go for a registration uh, of the product. So our strategy is to go fast, inherited retinal disorder, but also we have a view in the horizon where we want to dose also partially dystrophic patient, like in GA geographic atrophy. There to minimize the localization or to spread of the opsin, we have a non-viral laser-based delivery platform. We have an audacious initiative there and we are the only company got funded by audacious goal initiative from NIH for that. So by targeting bipolar cells, we took an initiative with an intravitreal injection with optimized viral vector, we are able to deliver to inner retina, which actually pay dividend. And both in our preclinical model and clinical model, we are seeing a disease-modifying property, not just giving light sensitivity, but also to stop further degeneration of inner retina. So we have distinguished advisory board who is advising us and with uh, our team which are passionate and dedicated. I cannot put all of them here in this, but every scientist and members are very passionate and dedicated working towards bringing this product to market. And our management team has ocular and gene therapy expertise. We are a pivotal stage asset with only series A funding. So this is the pipeline I already described the, uh, that our RP program is phase 2B slash 3 and full readout will happen uh, in Q1 and StarGuard program uh, is in a better seeing patients also with intravitreal injection readout will happen again key data will come out in Q1 and our MCO 20 program has shown efficiency and safety in NHP model which we are planning to submit IND next year. Just to tell, summarize that we are not only gene type agnostic, but we have shown that this can be used MCO10 for multiple IRD, whether wherever there is outer retinal diseases, you name it, uh, whether choroidermia, cone rod dystrophy, Usher syndrome, base disease. So all these diseases, we have different animal models, including LCA, RP65 model, where we have shown efficacy. So MCO is not only fast but sensitive. There is a competing interest between an op optogenetic technique. When you make it very fast, it becomes less sensitive. But with a unique molecular structure, 
from multiple species that has been combined to this molecule, we are able to show it is fast and is activated at natural light intensity, does not require a goggles which minimizes the phototoxicity. And very unique property in optogenetic space, whether it's research or in clinical stage company, that we have a broadband of scene. That means a person or a patient who is injected with it can see in different color environment, can see a red light, can see blue light or white light. It is not very specific to blue, green, or red wavelength of light. And I already mentioned that we are developing this unique, specially targeted delivery approach. So how it works already, it has been described. So optogenetics is basically like molecular solar panel. So, so you are basically putting the gene which is producing uh, the, uh, the molecule which is on the surface and that act as a solar panel. Your grid goes out, but when you're solar, with light, it actually generates electrical signal and that goes to the brain. And uh, I already mentioned we took risk, calculated risk, going with targeting bipolar cells and with this optogenetic approach, you can not only stimulate bipolar cell, but target on bipolar cell. That means it's very specific to restore or off bipolar cells. So with that bipolar cells which preserve, which are very much uh, close to photoreceptor, preserve a lot of visual processing and theoretically there is a limit to achieve up to 20 by 50. And some of our randomized mass trial now showing that we are, some of the patient's responder group is reaching that uh, stage. So not only we are going, going to make patients from profound blind to not blind, but also to drivable visual acuity level. So as I said, this is a unique promoter, target on bipolar cell, that is M glue R6 promoter, unique opsin, which is broadband, multispectral you are seeing, and a unique AV vector to target bipolar cells. This is our phase one to a trial. You'll see there are two dose groups here, and three low dose and eight high dose. They're very close to each other. And the patients who have light perception or hand motion, they're profiletically steroid treated for 10 days, and then safety profile uh, is very favorable, as I said. And not only they improve in mobility with a multiluminance mobility test that we developed, but also they improved in visual equity. This is showing the safety profile of uh, intraocular inflammation. So there was no systemic adverse event, mild to moderate inflammation, only two subjects required topical eye drop, IOP increase was treated with IOP lowering medications, and no increase in neutralizing antibody level. Most importantly, what we are not expecting or the optogenetics field was expecting that we could restore, not just try to slow down the visual acuity deterioration, but actually gain visual acuity. So you can see some subjects get up to 10 line gains, but we had a floor effect. Some subjects may have been below log mark two that we could not measure. So we took care of that floor effect by including a highly sensitive measurement when we can go below log mark two in our current randomized control trial. We had a ceiling effect about light sensitivity in the mobility test. In our current trial, we have included six different light intensity range instead of two or three that we did. So with this, what we see is, if you combine visual equity gain of 0.3 log mark, you see here seven out of eight high dose subjects uh, uh, receive that. And if you combine that with two light level gain as a composite endpoint, we see nine out of 11 subjects actually improved in uh, visual equity or two light level gain. So this is a trial where primary endpoint will be 52 weeks. We have a control group of nine subjects. We believe the high dose and mid dose are very close. They will yield a, uh, together one uh, uh, response. And with that data will be out in uh, 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 Q1 of uh, next year. Anecdotally, similar to phase one, two study, we are seeing patients improving uh, significantly, coming to the clinical site without help of caregiver. They are seeing faces of their children after tens of years. Some people are in uh, tears who are providing the services, and uh, some patients can see stripe of what kind of dress you are wearing. And of course, with visual equity and in mobility, they are improving much more. In some subjects, are improving five to six light level, and some subjects are improving 1.5 log mark, which because we could uh, ceiling and the floor effect, we could uh, etch, uh, our essay could detect now. So as I say, promised by that data, when we see there is a visual equity improvement beyond 20 by 200, we have actually included patients which are now 20 by 600, log, which, which is logmar 1.5, and these subjects has been also dosed, and we plan to 
finish the dosing by uh, August, uh, end of next month. So all this, debt, all this is being done at multiple sites across US, and also uh, due to limited time, I cannot go further, but here is a device, best approach for gene delivery, where you can see the reduced ERG response is recovered. So what you see here is not only achieving the blue and green light response, but also red light response, owing to the broad spectral range of the opsin. So with that, I think uh, I'm going to summarize here or show you the key milestone. We are applying for uh, European, uh, uh, getting ready for commercial launch of this product, uh, so that we are talking both in European agency and we'll have a end of phase meeting with FDA in uh, first half of next year, and we'll initiate the MCO20 GA trial next year. And thanks for your attention.